the great Laura Ingram, host of the Ingram Angle on Fox News, the great Laura Ingram. Uh, by the way, the Hannity debate is 9 o'clock. I misspoke. I said 8 o'clock. I don't want to misspeak on anything regarding this. But, Laura, we got a couple things to talk about. Um, can I just, before we get into the debate, micromanaging Israel and the IDF. That's what the Bidens are doing. That's what Democrats in the Senate are doing. Stopping Israel from annihilating the terrorists and the murderers. Um, I guess I'm not surprised, but I am disappointed. And I hope that the uh, Israelis ignore Biden completely. Well, That's fault on it. Is, is it surprising to anyone yeah. that politics trumps what is necessary in the face of evil when it comes to this White House? I mean, they see their support among young uh, voters declining. Mm. It's not just for foreign policy reasons, though. The economy is, is just horrific for most young people, despite what the market's doing today, Larry. Um, this is the Business Network. I have to be up on the markets, up 500 points. We, we report um, business. I know. Now, every, no, 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 every now and then. No, every now and then, yeah. <laughs> but, but look, it, it was clear from the beginning they were in an uncomfortable high-wire act mm. in dealing with Israel. And you, there's a toe in the pond of politics. There's a toe in the pond of, you know, Middle East, you know, foreign policy. And they don't know which way to go. And what happens, you get, you get fall over. Mm. So to me, it's a... It's a very risky gambit that they're engaged in, and I think we should kind of step back and let Israel do what Israel is going to do in this exactly. situation. Exactly. My fault. Israel, let We've Israel not been very good in the Middle East trying to manage things, Ex Of course. That's uh, across it. presidents. Israel's done better than we've done. I, I would say. In all seriousness, let Israel be Israel. Let the IDF be the IDF. Let's get this job done. They can probably do it in the next three months, four months, whatever, the bulk of it. Stop interfering and micromanaging because the left wing of the Democratic yeah, so it's, Party. What, what we're doing is already working so well in Ukraine. It worked well in Afghanistan. It worked well. I mean, there's a pattern of failure right. with no accountability right. from Pentagon leadership to State Department leadership. We never have any accountability. The same policies get pushed. Mm. They continue to crash and burn. And the American people foot the bill. There's enormous car carnage left behind. And then we kind of do it all over again. So I, I say, you know, it's time to kind of take care of business at home. We have our ally who's a dem democracy in the Middle East. We should respect that and we should support that. We ought to attend to our borders in the southern part of the country. <laughs> yeah, thanks. How about that idea? Yeah, well. Which is a fistfight in the Senate. Uh, House, good. H.R. 2, pretty good bill. The Senate, all over the place. The Democrats yeah. can't get their act together. Well, I mean, why not focus on that? Yeah, and I think there's an enormous uh, political gain to be had uh, in that for Republicans if they were unified mm. on the border. But the, the, the emotion is reserved for issues like Ukraine, um, other foreign policy issues on the part of our Senate leadership. Meanwhile, the American people are saying, excuse me, mm. Have you, have you been to our town yeah. square? Have you been to the bus station? Have you been to the airport? And it's, it's inhumane. It's cruel. It's a cruel policy. And I think our government has been, has been rejected time and again by the voters on this issue. And yet they keep, they're like open borders is, is their, that's their goal. Mm -hmm. the, that, oh, the goal is what's happening Democrats. right now. This is not an accident. It's the Biden goal. It's oh, the yeah. Democrats. Yeah, goal. but the open Republicans borders. are not unified, Larry. I mean, you cannot absolve the Republicans of any blame on this issue because... You know, they weren't exactly cheering when Trump was talking about the wall. They kind of dealt with Trump on the wall, but they didn't love the wall. They didn't love it at all. Most all they have to do, I mean, you may not solve it 100%, but you'll solve 90%. Keep building the wall, but remain in Mexico while you're no, asylum this was all solved. Trump solved all this. This was solved. I mean, solved. this was a no, perfect... immediate turn back at the border. You can't apply this for was... asylum in the United States right. because 98% of these people are economic migrants. They're coming here because they get some economic benefit. Maybe they'll work. Maybe they'll get just benefits. We all know that this is, this is such a boring debate for me because I've been having it for 20 years with people. Not with you, but... It, it, we all know it, and the American people are now saying it's their number one issue in some of these polls. Number yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Um, let's go back to um, have some fun. Gavin Newsom and Ron DeSantis. By the way, I want to repeat the Hannity debate is 9 p.m. tonight. Maybe you were in a different time zone, Larry. Maybe we, that's where we, we were. We wouldn't want to do anything so to it, get hurt. Sean mad. We don't want to get a like, football thrown at your head. Exactly. Or that's not, the whole not point. Not foam of it. either, a real one. So, what does Laura Ingram make of this debate? Well, and. Uh, with respect to DeSantis's opportunity of a sword, you taking the over or the under on DeSantis? Well, 
Look, uh, you could argue what does DeSantis have to gain from this, mm -hmm. to do this. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is an argument to say there's not a lot to be gained for him. However, now with all the kind of plutocrats coming in to give Nikki Haley a boost, maybe Ron DeSantis, who I think has had fantastic debates. Um, obviously, Trump's not on the stage with him, but I think he's, he's, he's done very well in these debates. I think he has a chance to really step out and step up in this debate. He and could redeem himself. Partially. Well, I don't think he really needs to redeem himself. I think his debate performances have been fantastic. I don't think there's anything wrong with them. I think he's he acquits himself. You know, look, I think Trump's going to be the nominee. Mm -hmm. But if if for some reason it's not Trump, and mm -hmm. I think it will be, but if for some reason it wasn't, who has the executive experience? Who has the track record on the issues that people care about? It's it. I mean, if you're just looking at it clinically, that's Ron DeSantis. You but know, tonight if, is a big opportunity. If he but, had spoken, the, the, the Ash Webster presentation, which has been in the Wall Street Journal yeah, and other publications, yeah. if, I think if DeSantis had spoken up early in the campaign, literally a year ago, instead of getting involved in legal machinations with Disney. I oh, mean, the culture war. Yeah, I see your point. Yep. Investors took Disney yeah, yeah, yeah. down, yeah, yeah, and yeah. they would have taken him down yeah, anyway. Yeah, the culture war. Remember Ted Cruz? They don't Ted, want the culture Ted Cruz war. is also very bright. He, he kind of went down that road know, in the presidential the campaign. And again, brilliant person. And, and you know, he, I'm sure he'd be a great president. But the issues that people care about are, number one, energy prices, border, yeah. economy. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I'm going to bring your gas down to $2 a gallon. So, that would have been a good start. No, no, that's right. And so if DeSantis had said, drill, baby, drill, if DeSantis had said, we're going to uh, sustain the Trump tax cuts and build on them more. You think he would have been ahead of Trump? If we're going to have deregulation. No. Well, I don't know that Probably he'd be ahead of Trump because I think the Republican Party's heart and soul is with but, Trump. But, Larry, but think it about... would have helped DeSantis. But Larry, th yeah, it would have it helped, helped because he, he got you. Got it wouldn't have been a 50 issues. percent uh, lead. It would have been something less. Well, so you, when you have Trump and DeSantis and Ramaswamy, they're kind of the conservative populists in the race. That's about 84 percent, 85 percent of the party. So what's going on? The, the establishment Haley. still thinks like no, we got this. No, no, no. The donors. The, oh, the donors big, are big donors always and big wrong. Democrats. No, the donors yeah. are always yeah. wrong. Well, they think it's, it's 2004. It's the key principle in politics. Yeah, it's not 2004. Country's right. moved on. You haven't said a word about Gavin Newsom. Not uh, well, a single you know, word, Laura. Fun Ingram. fact. Ready for my fun fact? <laughs> Gavin Newsom, because he used to come on my radio show all the time, he was the first guest on my radio show. I hosted it in San Francisco because I, I was traveling. I and he was in studio with me, and he was known as kind of the pragmatist yes. on, this, on the Board of Supervisors. Wait, wait, when he was mayor San of San Francisco. No, he was on the Board of Supervisors. He was running for mayor, oh. and he got rid of those um, those vouchers that were given out to people for, you know, for nothing. And he was pretty pragmatic back then. Yes. Boy, have things changed. I mean, he's a very well-spoken guy, and I think, uh, you know, we'll see. he's... he's He's an adept debater, mm -hmm. but he does not have the facts on his side. That's the problem. It's a thin deck, but he'll, he'll, give, it, deck. he'll give it his best shot. You know, he used to come on my old CNBC show all the time. Oh, yeah. And what you're saying is right. He was basically a moderate, oh, yeah. sometimes pro-business yeah. Democrat. So, But it, there, those, are, those are extinct. Extinct, that's right. Not a, that's not and a thing anymore. Tyrannosaurus Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's just, just yeah. yeah so that, so that's gone. But that, it'll, be, it'll be fun. And let me just say they both have really good hair, Larry. So this will be it. <laughs> This will be an excellent hair <laughs> forum because each of them has their own, you know. No, no, I'm just joking. But look, I, I wanted a debate between Haley and DeSantis, but then I was told that RNC doesn't give permission. You can't have debates among the mm. Republicans without RNC. I would have liked that debate. Well, that's kind of the where it's kind at, right? The debate. establishment versus the upstart. They're going to slug it out anyway. Yeah, but don't you want to see? I mean, I kind of want to see, see that. Yeah. If it's not if it's not Trump involved in the debate, you want to see Haley versus DeSantis. That would be fun. I just I just love issues issue yeah, exactly debates. Um, one last thing, you're awful kind with your time. Oh, love it. being here. Are we you kidding? It. In no, New York with Larry no, Kudlow, it's, it doesn't get better than this. It's fabulous. <laughs> you should see your homework. Do you actually prepare? Can you zoom in on this pile of paper? <laughs> Larry comes in with a stack of stuff. Like you're lucky if I have two pieces of paper. I always on my show. do. I can't help myself. I love that. I always it's do. A, um, Henry Kissinger passed away last yes. night at age 100. Um, I'm going to assume you met him, know I him. Not, no, I knew him quite well. As we used to have lunch quite as a bit. Did I. Um, and so we what's, your, what's your thing? We debated fiercely, and I mean fiercely, about China. It yes, shocks you to of hear. Of course. But I for, knew this was coming. For, tw <laughs> for 25 <laughs> years yes. since I met him the first time. And it was always respectful, but yes. it was hot. It was heated. Mm -hmm. And he had a view that 
look, we just we have to manage the world as it is. Mm. And you know, he had he he was brilliant. He could speak in full paragraphs, mm -hmm. quoting mm -hmm. the great the great books, the great authors, the great British authors, the great economists. I mean, he there, there was no one else like him. I, I think his life was complicated. Yeah, that's and the right. issues no, that's right. that that he dealt with. And I'm not going to I'm not going to bring up any of the criticisms right. of him because in death, you know, no, no, it's time to do that. He was always very gracious uh, to me, but we had massive knockdown drag out debates so, about China. And we had um, my saintly wife, Judy, and I would go to Bill and Pat Buckley dinners. Oh, my gosh. Those are the old days. Those yes, are, that was going a fun day. way back. Yeah, when New York was habitable. Uh, either right here in the townhouse or up in, uh, yeah. in Connecticut. Just either with the kiss, Nancy and Henry Kissinger and maybe She's one other couple. Too. She's brilliant. Very smart. And he taught me a lot. And like you, I didn't always agree. But I, when I got into government, Laura, just last point. Um, so I'm, now I'm on the China trade team. Oh, and yeah. We're going after China as they deserve going the Lighthizer, after China. You and Lighthizer. I know. Yeah. Well, actually, we were allies, Lighthizer and I. Well, you'll be glad to know. I know you were the first to hammer me on China. Yeah. You had some impact. Thank by the way. you. Thank you. Anyway, just saying. Um, during the period, uh, Henry, this is the last few years of the Trump administration, as we were trying to work out a deal with China. Henry said, and I said, Henry. We meeting with these guys. This is not the same. These are not the Deng Xiaoping free market reforms anymore. No, no. These are hammer and Brutal. tongs enemies. They're centralizing. They're oppressing everything. And he agreed, even though the China opening was perhaps his greatest moment historically. It's gone sour, and China's gone sour. But he, but he agreed with that. He saw yeah, well, that they it saw wasn't him, turning out they, well. They know that without Henry Kissinger, they wouldn't be looking at you know basically being tied with us as superpowers mm. around the world. I mean, Kissinger really made the rise of China. Without him, I don't think the rise of China would have been possible, and China knows that. So they were really toasting him today. But he did have a good position on immigration at the end, too. I don't know if you saw that clip about him saying, we handled immigration poorly. We need to have a melting pot. We don't melt into other cultures. They melt into ours, and that was... The Good only point. thing, you know, you go back in time, and I'm, Robert O'Brien's going to come out. We're going to talk oh, some more about great. Henry Kissinger. Um, former national security advisor. Um, Reagan ran against Kissinger in 76 and 80. Reagan wanted to overthrow Soviet communism. He thought it was too, too soft on lose. the Soviet Union. That's right. Whereas Henry was into this Metternichian, Metternichian, I don't know, you're smarter than well, me. Well, he, he... Balance of power He liked the, and the detente. detente. Detente yeah. was his, and, and Reagan said it had to be... We had to get stronger as a nation in order to deter the Soviet threat, and it was peace through strength. And mm. he took Kissinger on. I know. Right on. He really I mean, did. He thought Kissinger was you a threat it. on the Soviet issue, yeah. and I think, look, Reagan was right. I knew Metternich. Oh, did you? Of course I did. Oh, okay, of course you yes, did. Yes, it was in the early part of the 19th century. Okay, I thought, I thought you two had... <laughs> Not Bismarck. In the old days. Metternich. Had a few... Laura belts. Ingram, absolutely the best of the best. Please catch uh, Laura every night. The Ingram Angle, weekdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, Fox News. Every now and then I get a whack at that yeah. show. You're the best. Great Thank to see you. you.